Hi and welcome to the Unquendo Guitars Workshop. My name is Daniel and this is the second part of the video series where I'm building a tribute to the Westone Pantera X390. And in the previous episode I already redesigned the guitar and the neck on this piece of MDF. So if you haven't seen that video, yeah, please check it out. But in this episode I'm going to turn these designs into some usable templates. In the previous episode I did the, the redesign of the guitar and the neck as a single piece but in order to make templates I need a separate copy of the neck design so off camera I already made a copy of the neck and the headstock design uh, right here so now I can use a jigsaw or my bandsaw to cut out the neck design and the body design as two separate pieces. To start off I'm going to roughly cut out these two shapes using a jigsaw so they fit easier on a bandsaw but of course you can also use a jigsaw to cut out your designs. I do recommend keeping some space in between your line and where you're cutting especially when using a jigsaw as they tend to wander a little so yeah keep a little, some margin of error on your cuts. And after using a jigsaw to roughly cut up the sheet of MDF, I'm going to use my bandsaw to cut much closer to the line. Sometimes filming these tutorials can be a bit tricky because the camera gear, in this case the tripod and the camera lighting uh, interferes with the job you're doing. In this case the template is hitting the tripod of the camera and this sometimes results in little mistakes like this which I'm going to fix later on. So I've got my body and my neck roughly cut out and there's still some material to remove, some cleaning up to do and for the body I'm going to use my spindle sander to get to the final shape and for the neck especially these straight edges of the neck I'm going to use a guide and my router table to make absolutely sure these edges are as straight as they can be. Before I can go to the spindle center to finalize the outline of this body, I first need to repair this little cut made by the mistake on the bandsaw. So I took some dust from the bandsaw and I can just fill in the gap or the little cut with some super glue and some dust. Just like so and now I can let it dry and use the spindle sander to finalize the outline. I use a spindle sander to do the majority of the cleanup and get as close to the line as I can. But of course you can also use files, rafts, sandpaper, uh, yeah, whatever you have to clean up these edges.
after using the spindle sander to get as close to the final result as possible I'm going to switch over to a regular sanding block and some sandpaper to finalize this shape and to really hone in all the curves and make sure everything is nice and smooth this is where I recommend you spend some extra time on although you might think well it's just a template yeah just because it is your template you really want to make sure this is as perfect as you can get it uh, presumably you're going to use this template to make multiple guitars and if there's a slight error or a slight is inconsistency in your template it will be in all of your guitars so yeah I recommend just spend your time spend an evening with a sanding block and some sandpaper and really get a nice and smooth outline on your first template <laughs> At some point it gets really tricky to see if a line or a curve is nice and smooth but the only thing to make sure all your lines are nice and smooth is to run your fingertips along the edge and you can fairly easy tell if that edge is nice and smooth or it still needs some work with some sandpaper. Especially these curves are very tricky to get nice and smooth so yeah take your time and get these as nice as you can yeah I'm pretty happy with the body template right now so before I make a copy of this template I'm going to work on the template for the next some more and the main focus is to get these edges straight and of course this edge uh, as well and there are a couple of ways to achieve this of course the easiest way is to get an existing uh, neck template and yeah my necks are exactly the same so I could use this template and a bearing guided router bit to copy uh, this neck shape up until the headstock of course I could also use a straight edge uh, of some sort uh, stick it to the template using masking tape and super glue and again run a bearing guided router bit uh, along this straight edge on either side and if you don't have a router table or a, a, a router or a, a, a bearing guided router bit you can of course also use uh, leveling beams with sandpaper attached to, to them and very gently sand the side of your neck template until it's nice and straight and you're up against the mark you made in your design. I think for this template I'm going to use the leveling beam method. I think it's just as fast as setting up my router table and attaching a template or a straight edge and I think I can do it just as fast with just uh, regular beams with some various grids of sandpaper starting with 120 grit on my small leveling beam and I think I'm going to finish it off and uh, for the uh, final touches with 240 grit uh, sandpaper on my longer leveling beam so I can make the final adjustments very carefully with a longer leveling beam so here we go And just check once in a while with a straight edge if you're still nice and straight and this is another way to make sure I got a nice and straight edge on my neck template is to clamp down my leveling beam and just very carefully send down the edge
For these last passes, I'm using 380 grit sandpaper and I make very light passes. And after several passes, I keep checking for symmetry using my calipers. From the center line to the edge on one side and it has to be the same on the other side, which it is. So I'm nice and symmetrical at the uh, tail end of the neck and at the nut also nice and symmetrical. Now that I'm done sanding the neck and the body template, I'm going to temporarily attach the neck template to the body using a couple of small screws. And now with the templates temporarily attached, I can now get a good feel and good idea of what this guitar is going to be once it's finished. I can see all the dimensions, if the uh, proportions are all nice uh, and the way I want them. And I can also test out how the guitar will sit uh, on my lap when I'm playing this guitar. If my hand is for example near the bridge, uh, what my picking position will be, uh, if this angle isn't too steep or too shallow for the leg rest so the guitar won't slide back and forth and I think I'm fine uh, in all playing positions so yeah I highly recommend attaching the neck template to your body template uh, before you do anything else so yeah now that I'm happy with how this guitar is hopefully going to turn out I'm first going to make a couple of copies of these templates before I do anything else so making copies of your template is of course very easy. Just place your template on the material you want to use for your secondary template. In this case MDF, but it could also be acrylic or a multiply or something. Uh, just trace around your body shape. And I've already done it because this is the second take I'm doing of this section. And then of course cut out the outline on the bandsaw or again with a jigsaw. And then I'm going to use my router table and uh, bearing guided router bit to make sure the copy is to the exact same dimensions and the exact same shape as my master template. After making two copies of the existing templates on the bandsaw, so the rough cut, I'm going to attach my master template to, the, uh, to these copies. And of course you can use the masking tape and super glue trick or double sided tape to stick uh, the master template and one of the copies together, but I'm just going to use two screws. I drilled two countersunk holes in my master template. I'm going to somewhat align the pencil marks with the master template and just screw these two together. It's just to hold them temporarily in place so I can use my router table to make the exact copy. And when using screws, of course, make sure they're not penetrating on the back or at the top of these templates. So they're nice and flush. And these templates are really nicely secured before using the router table. A router table is by far the quickest and easiest way to get a perfect copy of an existing template and that's why we make templates in the first place to be able to use a router table or a handheld router to copy a template onto another piece of wood or yeah, in this case another template. Before I'm going to detach the master template from the copy I'm going to make sure I transfer my center lines onto the uh, copy. Take a square and a pencil and just 
yeah make sure as accurate as you can you transfer the center line onto your copy And for the copy of the neck template, I'm not only going to copy the center line, but also all the fret positions and the position for the nut and the end of the fretboard. Just take a simple little square and start transcribing, or I don't know what the correct English term is, all the marks for the fret positions that are relevant to the build and the fretboard. 12 fret, of course the nut position, and the end of the nut on each side of the template. And my copies are done. To get a perfect new center line on the copy of the template, first I'm going to draw in the line where the nut is going to be and the end of the fretboard and I think the 12th fret and one other line somewhere in the center between the nut line and the 12th fret. Of those lines I'm going to determine the new center point and if all those center marks align uh, I can draw in a new and perfect center line. So let me first draw in those reference lines, divide them in half and draw in the new center line. The more reference points you can get the more accurate your center line uh, will be if all those marks line up. And of course I'm going to double or maybe even triple check uh, these marks. Now with the four center marks on the new template, I can draw in a very accurate center line. Just like so. Now that I've made multiple copies of each template, I've marked the original two templates with uh, Unquendo Pantera Master and these are going to go in storage and never uh, to be used again, hopefully at least not for the actual guitar build, but I'm only keeping these uh, in storage so whenever one of the uh, other templates uh, gets damaged or wears out, I can use the masters to create an exact copy of the original. So these are going to go in storage and now I can make variations um, of these templates. For example, I'm going to make a template that includes the control cavity. So before I can design a control cavity template, I need to make a layout for all the components and all the cavities like the neck cavity, the pickup cavities and where the bridge is going to sit uh, so I can lay out where I want my controls to go uh, and then draw in a control cavity. From my master template I know the end of the neck will be 110 millimeters from the edge of the body. So this is where my neck will end and of course I take my uh, protractor and draw a line perpendicular to the center line. So this is where my neck will end. Take my neck template and align it. It doesn't have to be that precise because I'm not going to create a template for the neck pocket uh, in this template. 
I always like to keep those separate. And I'm going to draw in where my fretboard is going to end. It should be 42 mils. And now I can draw in the first pickup cavity. Of course, use a pickup ring. And I'm going to use these holes. This should be about 22 millimeters from the end of the fretboard. And this is just to double check. I always like to use both uh, a calculated dimension and a dimension that I've taken from an actual piece of hardware. Just to double check. Yeah, and it goes straight through all three points. So like I did with the center line for the neck, I always make as many reference points as possible uh, so I can double check what I'm doing. I now can take my template for a humbucker, align it with all the marks I've just made. So next thing I need to do is mark the scale length on the body template. To do so I'm going to use the template for the neck, align it with all the marks so it's in position where it should be, like so. Use a long ruler, align it with the nut line where the scale length is going to be, in my case 648 mils for a 25 and a half inch scale length. Make sure everything stays in place. And this should be my scale length. Use again a protractor to make sure my line is nice and perpendicular to the guitar uh, center line. And I can use my template uh, for a Floyd Rose Tremolo. It's a template system and I'm not sure if I did a video on these template sets. Uh, yeah, I will look it up and maybe in the future I will do uh, a video on this template. But what I can do, I can use this guide, template guide and align it with my scale length and the center line. And I have these inserts to route all the different sections for a, a recessed Floyd Rose tremolo. Uh, in this case for a shallow bridge where the studs are going to be, so I can mark these. In the case of this one, replace the insert. Realign everything. Usually I stick this down but it hasn't to be that precise in this case because I'm not going to uh, include these um, um, cavities into this template. I always like to keep them separate so I can adjust the positioning during the build if needed. For example, if I accidentally uh, create my neck pocket a bit different that will um, impact everything else. So, and that's why I never include the uh, pockets for the pickups and, and, the, and the Floyd Rose tremolos and such in the main body template. I always keep them separate just to give me a bit more flexibility and I can adjust 
during the build if needed. So this is the main outline for the Floyd Rose bridge uh, cavity if I, if I decide to do a recessed uh, Floyd I'm not sure yet and from this pocket for the bridge I can determine where my bridge pickup is going to be and I like the edge to be about seven mils from the edge of the recess seven mils should be the edge and 27 should be the center line so make a mark there again use a pickup ring as a reference should be right here and use a protractor again to create the center line Templates to draw in the shape. I like to make my own templates out of MDF, but of course, there are plenty of stores that sell pre made templates for um, several types of Floyd Rose tremolos and, of course, uh, pickups as well. Uh, I'm sure Stu Mac has them, uh, TLC Guitar Goods has them, uh, maybe uh, Guitars and Woods sell uh, pre made templates for your uh, standard components like bridges and pickups. So here's the bridge pickup and of course the neck pickup and the bridge. Time to figure out where the controls are going to be. I always like my volume control to be in line with the end of the pickup as a reference. So I can just elongate this line. And what I do like is that I can touch the volume knob with my pinky to do volume swells when I'm playing. So usually I have my strings muted on the bridge for palm muting and I want to be able to reach the volume knob with my pinky. So I want it to be somewhere around there. And usually for my guitars it's about 80 millimeters from the center line. So make a mark. And this is perfect where the mark is in my regular playing position I can just reach the volume knob with my pinky but it's still out of the way when I'm playing so I don't hit the volume knob when I'm playing uh, chords for example. To lay out the rest I want them to be somewhat parallel to this line here so I can use my straight edge and there's a tiny bit of a straight edge in my design, so I can align my straight edge to that line. Draw in a line. And now perpendicular to this line, I can measure between the mark I just made for the volume knob and this line. It's 15 millimeters. So I can draw in 15 millimeters at either side. Create a line and it should hit all the marks I just made. Yep, it does. Again, three reference points to just make sure everything aligns nicely. And this will be the uh, line on which I'm going to place my controls. I always place my controls about 50 millimeters apart. So now it's easy. Align my ruler. And just make two marks for my uh, control knobs. And I want to have one volume control and two tone controls. That's the same as it is on the actual guitar. It is one uh, volume control and two tone controls, which are push-pull. 
This guitar has the Westone electronics and the push pull is for coil splitting and phase shifting. Of course, I'm going to use Fishman Fluence pickups and one of the tone knobs will be um, uh, coil split as well and voice one two selection and maybe I even use uh, uh, a third voice selection option on the Fishman pickups for the control uh, or for the volume control so I can have three different voice selections uh, uh, with push pull pots on my controls on this guitar. For the three-way switch I'm going to follow the layout again of this guitar and the switch is somewhat perpendicular to the center line from the final control pot, so that's where I'm going to place mine as well. So perpendicular to the last control pot, just a line and on the actual guitar it's about 40 mils so that's what I'm going to use as well. To make sure everything fits I'm going to draw in the outline for some regular pots and those are 23 mils rounded about in diameter. So I'm going to take my trusty uh, circle drawing helper, draw in some lines perpendicular to the reference lines so I'm able to align my, temp my uh, drawing guide and this is just to make sure when I'm going to draw in a control cavity I know I can fit a regular pot without it hitting one of the walls of the cavity and of course the last one is the three-way switch and I know the position of the three-way switch here at the back is somewhat debatable on my guitar designs especially when using a floating bridge or a tremolo bridge because it can be hard to reach when playing. It's something I got used to from years of playing on my original Weston guitar and the reason why I like it is because when I'm playing I'm absolutely sure I won't accidentally hit the three-way switch and select <laughs> the wrong pickup when I'm playing. Uh, which can happen when the three-way switch is at the position where the volume knob is, which is uh, also a, a regular position or a frequently used position for the three-way switch or a switchblade. Now that I've laid out all the components uh, on the template, I could start designing the control cavity. But while I was making these marks, it got me thinking about how to actually go about routing all these cavities. For the front of the guitar it shouldn't be a problem, I can route most of the cavities while the guitar is still nice and flat using my templates. I only have to take into account to route them a tiny bit more deeper to allow for the curvature because on the outsides of the cavities they are going to lose a bit of the depth when I'm going to create the curvature in the body. The backside is a different story, especially the control cavity. I think I can route a regular cavity for the tremolo strings because they are, have to be uh, parallel or in the same plane as the strings will be, so it's uh, in theory nice and flat. The control cavity is another matter uh, because the knobs are in the curved section of the body and they have to protrude perpendicular to uh, yeah, a plane that's perpendicular to the curvature uh, they're going to be in. I'm not sure if I can route just a regular cavity like I always do while the guitar is still uh, or the guitar blank is still nice and flat or if I have to route the cavity after I've curved the body so the inside of the cavity 
will have the same curvature as the top has and the knobs will protrude um, at the correct angle so to say it's a bit technical and a bit difficult to explain uh, right here uh, but i hope you can follow so yeah this is unfortunately where i'm going to leave it for this video i have to really think about if i can uh, incorporate the template for the cavity in this template or if i have to make a separate template or maybe even have to come up with a routing jig or maybe make my own pin router uh, for me to be able to route that control cavity it's a bit more complicated than a control cavity should be in theory but i have to think about it and i don't have any more time uh, in this episode unfortunately also it's a sunday afternoon it's very nice weather outside and i expect uh, kids to start playing around my workshop and my neighbors uh, coming outside so i won't be able to record any more videos this afternoon anyway so yeah i hope you join me in the next episode i hope to see you all there but until then have a nice week